I'm a pharmacy manager with the Department of Correction. Yeah, it was very informative. Uh, this criminal investigation with the pharmacy, <laughs> you have to be careful. I didn't know that yeah. much about it. <laughs> yeah, I like the presentation that was given today, especially for pharmacists in terms of inspections. It brought a lot to bear on the situation in terms of what we need to know for the DEA inspection, for the Department mm -hmm. of Health inspection, for the Board of Pharmacy inspections. A lot of pharmacists are not aware of all the different uh, regulations that we have to uh, abide by. And I think it was brought out very uh, succinctly today by the speakers in terms of what we need to be aware of. We need to know all these rules. I, I, I thought Juan Santos could have been Al Pacino. I mean, he was that <laughs> good when he got to rolling. They were really amazing. pharmacists, um, those types of folks. Let me tell you just really briefly about Chad Lamont, but nobody can be an expert in all things healthcare. It's just impossible. It changes every day, changes every month. So we have 17 healthcare attorneys. Most of us have LLMs in healthcare from the only university. Others have many, many years. And unique to many healthcare practices, uh, four of our attorneys are experts in healthcare criminal law. So they defend people all over the country uh, in a lot of different areas, and unfortunately, or fortunately, we defend a lot of pharmacists for a lot of different areas, and we're going to talk about some of those things. The area that I want to talk about uh, is DEA, DEA inspections, and we'll talk first about DEA enforcement, um, preparing for an inspection, surviving an inspection, post inspection procedures, and then one that gets many, many pharmacists in trouble, corresponding responsibility. I cannot tell you the number of pharmacists we represent um, for the sole reason they didn't exercise their corresponding responsibility. Um, enforcement. A lot of people don't understand all the enforcement tools and powers that the government has. Uh, the first of which, you can get an admonishment letter from the DEA. Um, it's kind of a slap on the wrist, but it's a slap on the wrist that has some bite to it. Because if you get in trouble with the same thing in the next three years, it becomes kind of a, a major penalty. So don't just disregard an admonishment letter. Um, use it to make whatever changes are necessary. Civil monetary penalties can be huge, huge. I have a pharmacist I'm representing right now. Penalties are $1 million. They can get up there very, very quickly. A civil monetary penalty is basically this. It's fines. It's um, economic penalties that the DEA wants to charge against you, and many of these fines are for each transaction. So if the fine is $10,000, it's one transaction. If you have 1,000 transactions that are violated, you can do 10,000 times 1,000, it gets way up there, 10,000 times 100. So you have to be very careful, and if you receive um, anything with respect to the DEA, and they want to impose monetary, civil monetary penalties, don't try to do it on your own. One of the problems we have with pharmacists often is they try to do it on their own early because, like many healthcare providers, they feel like, you know, we could just have a kumbaya moment with the DEA, or everybody will all get together, we'll share our feelings, we'll talk about it, it'll go away. Well, it won't. Um, it'll stay here. So you want to be very comfortable and very careful about that. Then, of course, the killer to your practice is DEA suspensions and DEA revocations. Um, and those happen, and when they do happen, the appellate process is long, it's expensive, and remember, the appellate process is through the director of the DEA. There's a number of steps, you go know, through administrative law judge and all of that, but it's long and it's hard, and you have to prove that you're worthy of having a DEA registration. And then, of course, there are criminal penalties. We'll spend a lot of time on criminal penalties. We'll talk about some of them as we go on. But those criminal penalties can be very severe. I mean, significant time in prison. Unfortunately, we have clients that are doing significant time. The big areas aren't compounded. The other big areas are not exercising corresponding duty. The other big area is trying to work with a particular physician so that you get scripts for the most expensive drugs that you can dispense so you can make the highest profit. 
Um, and if there's a scheme you can think of today, and I know you good people are involved in them, trust me, there are a lot of your peers that are involved in them. Uh, we get calls all the time, every day. And then there's forfeiture. Remember, if there's any violation that occurs, other than a civil monetary penalty, other than an admonishment, if you made any money as a result of that transaction they believe to be illegal, you, you'll re be required, in most cases, to forfeit all of that, um, which can be very, very expensive, as we all know. So preparing for a DEA inspection. Um, you're going to hear more about audits and other things. It's a similar kind of thing. You need to have your documents in order. You need to have your policies, procedures, and your compliance plans in order. Now, what many pharmacists have is policies, procedures, compliance plan, all of this stuff, and they don't enforce any of it. So in reality, it's a piece of paper that the practice of your pharmacy techs, your pharmacists, um, don't follow. And if you're the owner of a pharmacy, make sure your pick's following these things. There's no reason to create policies, procedures without ensuring that they're enforced. And that's one of the things that DEA is going to look at. Not just do you have these things on paper, but are they enforced? And the interesting thing with the compliance program, if it's properly prepared and properly filed, under the federal sentencing guidelines, section D, if you have a compliance program, you get tremendous credit for it. In other words, even if something goes wrong and there's a false claim, there's a monetary penalty, um, the courts will go light on you because you really tried. And in most cases, that's strong enough to get out of a criminal penalty. You're going to still maybe pay some money back, and there may be some ramifications on your, on your registration, but at least you have to go to jail for it. So having a compliance program is extremely uh, important to have. Um, preparing your documents. Make sure they're in order. Make sure they're in order. Now, one of the problems often is you know about these requirements. You know that you have to have your state license and your DEA certificates posted. You know you have to have an authorized personnel log. All these things are valid. You have to have policies and procedures. We all know it. Yet many of your peers don't follow. So it's simple citations. You know, ACA comes in to do an investigation, uh, DEA comes in, and your licenses aren't posted, and you don't have a roster of authorized personnel. These are minor things, but they add up. And then potentially they put you on the unofficial list to be looked at again in a year, or in two years, or in three years. And you, you don't want to do that. Um, the other thing is, people don't understand sometimes that part of a pharmacist's duty, it's a mathematical equation, right? You buy drugs, you dispense drugs, sometimes there's spillage, sometimes there's theft, and they have to zero out. The amount you sell, the amount of your inventory, the amount of spillage, and the amount of theft has to equal what you bought. And you'd be surprised the number of times that it doesn't even come close. And you have to be able to rectify that. Or it is a violation. And you might get fined for it. And you might otherwise get penalized for it if it's significant. Um, and before an inspection, we're going to talk about this. Don't go back and recreate records that didn't exist. Um, because that sometimes gets found out too. And that's not a very good thing. Uh, it won't be very good for you. Compliance program. Um, you need to have one. Many of you don't. So some of the things you need, well, let's talk about this. What is a compliance program? A compliance program is basically this. Knowing what you need to do, you create the steps of what you need to do. How do you fill a prescription? What happens when there's information missing? What happens or how do you deal with the phone in script? How do you deal with electronic script? So you know how that is. You write down the procedures of what you have to do. And then you periodically double check and you look into the record, you look into the files and you see, is this being accomplished? If it's not, you have to take corrective action, which could be just education. It could be suspending somebody. It could be terminating somebody. It could be that you have to report whatever it is that you find. But you have to continually look at this it's not something that you can just, you know, gloss over. Because most of the problems you're going to run into are improper documentation. 
um, not having proper policies in place. And, and you know what to do. Most of you know what to do and how to do it. But in the everyday life of being a pharmacist, we forget to do it. We forget to do the paperwork. We forget to make sure all this stuff corresponds. Uh, we have a big case right now where there's a clawback on a pharmacy for about $500,000. The pharmacist has just terrible records to support that these scripts, the argument of the, the people that want to claw it back is that these were automatic refills and the, the patient, uh, the consumer, didn't order them and didn't want them. So uh, they went out and talked to some of the patients and the patient said, and they're mostly elderly, so, well, I don't know. I didn't really want this. They, they really couldn't recall and all that. So they get back and they disallow and they want to call back the money. So there should be records that the patient wanted to have automatic refills. There should be documentation of this intercourse there isn't. It's the pharmacist's work. And that doesn't go very far when you're having particular problems. Um, Cash purchases, make sure those are, are properly recorded. We're going to talk about that. Cash purchases are a red flag. A number of these things, we're going to talk about what red flags are. Red flags are bogus. There's something made up by the DEA, but it's something they use to determine if, in fact, you have a violation, and then they go after you hard. We're going to talk about what some of those red flags are.